I think the ones that uh, raise my consciousness the highest, it's after, of course, the last five years that I'm not drinking, not using drugs, not alcohol, coffee, sugar and stuff. Yeah. The water fast. You know, the relationship between a child and mother is a music. Is music. Wow. Because music you cannot touch. But it's an energy between us. And uh, her mom and dad had sex under a tree or something and never seen each other again. And, and, and she was born like lost, but look where she is. That's why the suicide rate is higher in men, men than, women. than women. Bună seara! Sunteți la podcastul lui Damian Drăghici din nou. Vă mulțumesc mult pentru toate mesajele voastre. Vă mulțumesc pentru tot sprijinul și sunt de cele mai multe ori copleșit de atâta iubire. Astăzi am un invitat extrem, extrem, extrem de special. Îl urmăresc și urmăresc activitatea poate de ani și ani și ani de zile. Am citit cărțile, sunt un mare, mare fan. Am contactat-o cu soția lui acum, nu știu, 8-9 luni de zile. Și mi-a venit ideea să, să-l invit la podcast. Mă simt extrem de onorat și de bucuros la, să facem astăzi un podcast. Și am onoarea să-l am, nu știu cum să-i spun, marele uh, om, psihoterapeut, guru, uh, om incredibil, plin de dragoste și iubire, Menis uh, Yusri. Very nice to, to have you here, uh, Menis. Thank you for the invitation to talk to you. Thank you. Uh, the people that watch me on my podcast, They know usually that uh, I have the that I'm open and I have mm. the courage to to put myself in a position in a vulnerable position uh, to almost do like a therapy. Mm. So uh, today is going to be my therapy session with you. For you or for me? <laughs> for me. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I will start with uh, the question that I ask most of the people: uh, What are you, Menis? Me, Menis. Yeah. What are, What are you? <laughs> What a question. What, what do you mean by a question? What are you? Not who are you. What are you? You are love, you are a spirit. What are you? I never thought about this question. And I, 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 I cannot define myself in a specific category in any way, actually. Uh, everything I have done in my life uh, was not done by uh, deciding what I would be like or what I have to be like or... Uh, I never predicted what I am now. So it has evolved by itself. So the question for me is a little difficult because uh, I never imagined or thought or decided who I am or who I should be. So uh, thank you. So it doesn't quite answer the question, but this yeah. is where I can get, as far as I can go with that. But then who are you? Who are me? <laughs> human being like everybody else. Human being. What, uh, what is about you that I've seen also yesterday in the, in the seminar? Uh, at, so, or, or at what age you started <clears throat> to understand that it's not, we are not uh, human thinking beings, yes. we are human feeling beings. Yeah. Uh, can I just go back a little bit? Please to your previous question, uh, because the thought came to my mind. It's related to how I work also. If you define anything, you limit it. So uh, I cannot define who I am. I cannot even define anything I am doing because it will become limited. It will stay. So I am open it for to be changed all the time, you see. So you're, you're, you're asking about a human being? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm asking the next question. Like, I've, I've seen yesterday that you, you talk so much about, I know that we are right now in the era of information, so yeah, much information yeah, and yes. cognitive and r- Russian. Yes, yes. And I've seen that you talk about, uh, like, most of the enlightened people, somehow they talk about feeling. Yeah, okay. About we are human feeling beings, not right. human thinking be- okay. beings. Okay. That happened at a certain age or was always present with you? You always you were f- feeling before thinking? Well, I think, first of all, the word feeling is a bit misleading. I mean emotions. But we are used to mix the two words all the time. 
And feelings are not emotions at all. Actually, feelings is thinking, in fact. So we, we are born, when we're born, we only feeling, we only have emotions. In fact, our intellect, our cognitive ability, our thinking mind developed two years later. So the first two years of life are absolutely critical. We only emotions. And because we're emotions and the, the part of the brain that handles emotion, which is the right brain, is very uh, pl plastic. It moves and changes by the environment. And from after two years, we begin to develop not only thinking, we develop defenses. Because the world we live in is totally unpredictable, inconsistent, uh, full of surprises. It is like a, almost a jungle. Because even we're sitting here now, we don't know what's going to happen next. Maybe a bomb will come from Ukraine or something, you know? So we had to develop a mind to process our emotions. Uh, let me clarify. Emotions, purpose, is survival. If we don't have emotions, we will not be able to get feedback from the environment about what is happening to us. So we feel emotions and emotion. This is where the creation of humanity is, is emotions, because I call emotions a messenger from consciousness. Is how I call it. Your high level consciousness sends the world around you and creates emotions. And emotions go to the part of the brain to be processed. And normally, in the beginning, these emotions are stabilized uh, naturally by the brain. But later, when emotions become so intense and so difficult, the mind comes in trying so hard to manage the emotion and the feelings come in. Feeling is talking about emotions. But people mix these two together. And then when they talk to each other, say, I feel this, but they actually when they say, I feel this, I'm actually thinking this, you see? So when the mind comes in, they start to control the emotions. And then so much happened to us uh, in life. So we start now build up defenses. And over the years, because you, maybe you've, done, you've seen this in other courses, over the years, the defenses become very sophisticated and they become another personality or a face that we use to survive in the world. And then, at some point, we start to lose who we are and we become these defenses. And we become unreal people. And if you remember in the course I said something yesterday, I don't know if you were in the room at this time. I said, if you see this world as real, you become unreal. But if you see the world as unreal, you become real. So basically, we, ha we live in an unreal world that made it, made, it, made it up by us. Because now we have a perception of life based on the way we protect ourselves. And of course, the, the beginning of all this happened, unfortunately, with the relationship with one person only, which is our mother. Even if the mother was never there, there's a relationship with her. And the relationship with the mother that was never there, I'm talking because we had a conversation before. The absence of mother is a mother also in, in the consciousness of the child. So if somebody comes and tells me, okay, I never had a mother, I would say, you did, but you live with a motherless mind, you see? And that's also another level of defenses you have. So now we all live in a world of our own creation. And the people who have a very high level of consciousness escape. Escape, and, and these people are very unique and very special. And this something can be acquired, but it will take some work. And uh, so I'm going further with the question. The people who want to acquire it, yes, and some people have it naturally, they work hard to acquire it, but the fact they're willing to work hard, that means they have something already that will be able to acquire it. You see what I mean? Yeah. So now we live in a world of our own creation. 
You said something very interesting yesterday, forgive me. Yeah. You said that uh, once you raise your level of consciousness at a certain, yeah, yeah. certain side, yeah. that uh, actually whatever comes towards you, you can, re you can resolve it or you can manage it in a different way. Easily. The more you raise your, your consciousness. Easy. I can prove it to you very quickly. See a child like 10, 12, 13 years old, something small happen, they get very upset. But not for you, because your consciousness is much higher than a child. And then you can take it further. Now, if your consciousness is so high and you have a, a problem you cannot decide, it's not a problem, because the, the problem you face is much smaller than you are. The same. So if I raise my consciousness, I don't have to worry about problems, because the problem will be too, too small for me. Is this actually what you're saying? Yeah, and uh, out of all the... I mean, of course, throughout my uh, journey in the therapeutical world. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, or not sure, but I, I can think about it that uh, all of the therapies somehow contributed to my healing yeah. process. Yeah. But out of uh, even the conventional uh, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, yeah, yeah. or EMDR, or yeah. all type of therapy, I've done also the non-conventional, the MDMA, MDMA psilocybin, magic yeah. mushrooms, and other mm -hmm. ones. I think the ones that uh, raise my consciousness the highest, it's after, of course, the last five years that I'm not drinking, not using drugs, not alcohol, coffee, sugar and stuff. Yeah. The water fast. It's uh -huh. unbelievable once you do the seven days, right. once every month, how, how, much, how, how much easier you can uh, manage your emotions and your, you can conserve your energy and stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I understand. I, I actually don't know much about it, but I can see when the, when you don't eat and uh, maybe it can do something to your consciousness, maybe. But I, I don't have much background about this. I, want, I just wanted to share this with you. And now you said something about emotions, which is amazing. And throughout the last years, I've been uh, seeing uh, this over and over and over. Last year I participated in a retreat, it's called uh, Primal Deconditioning, it's done by a lady who worked with Osho many yeah. years, and I heard over and over and over saying in that seminar and in the many other retreats, this phrase that most of us, we are emotional illiterate, mm -hmm. that we are somehow not educated how to understand our emotions. So that's, yeah. a, that's what you're talking about, correct? It, it could be. You see, emotions don't think and uh, they are spontaneous. They can never be um, articulated. So in a, in a seminar or when I work with people, um, many people are not in their emotions at all. And if they're not in their emotions, it's not very easy to help them because all the problem is in emotions, not in their The story about what happened to us is not what happened to us. You see, emotion cannot be, it, it needs a very special skills to, to deal with the emotions in people. It's a different dimension altogether. And that makes all method of therapy difficult. Because once you have a method, you are not handling emotions, you handle your plans. It makes it very difficult, you see. Thank you so much. And, uh to close this, uh, this little yeah. chapter of emotions. Uh, I've been a musician my entire life and uh, I, I have forgotten that uh, I remember on a, on a journey, uh, when I did a, one of the trips, I remember that when I was 10 years old, I was with my mother, my grandmother, yeah. playing on the stage and uh, I guess I was very, very emotional. And I made uh, on myself the first and the second, poop and pee on myself. I completely mm -hmm. forgot, but my entire life, uh, there was something weird because I don't have fear of public speaking, mm. which is the, the worst fear yeah, of a, every, any human being. Everybody. Was. So I don't have this. And then I would go on stage and the emotions were so difficult that I needed to drink or alcohol or something to calm mm. myself down. The last two years I don't need anything. And now I understand that actually when I have the emotions, yeah, or I'm a Romanian, it's called, oh my God. I'm very emotional, I feel the, the emotions. Actually, it's a good thing, because it makes me create more. 
But finally, I mean, it, it took 50 years of music, because I'm 53, and 40 years professionally to, to figure out that actually when my heart is beating faster, I'm creating more emotional music. When I'm exactly completely relaxed, it's also good, but it's a different type of music. So it takes a long time to figure out uh, what uh, the emotions are. You know, the relationship between a child and mother is a music. Is music. Wow. Because music you cannot touch. But it's an energy between us. And uh, you can see in concerts nowadays, when especially young people are going mad, going to concerts all the time, they're trying to find something that they cannot touch, you see. Uh, music actually is a very high level of consciousness, actually. But it has some kind of magic to it. Uh, this is something when people sit and listening to, say, classic music, yes? Not everybody understand it. Nobody can. But people with high level of consciousness, it touched them so deeply. You see? Almost, yeah. Uh, it's very, very big. And my feeling is, uh, it's a bit like poetry. But poetry has a little bit of language in it. And m music can never be contained. It can never even finish. And, and uh, it, it is not actually the music. I, you, you can talk about this more than I can, but it is not the notes. It's the space between okay. the notes that is the real music. You see? And this is a very high level of consciousness. But the same as the relationship with your mother. When a presence of a mother with a child and uh, she has her rhythm of music flowing, the, the, the child will pattern on her, will, will catch the, the same... same the same pulsation, the same pulse. Crescendo, decrescendo, whatever you call it, the same flowing together. And then one day, this child starts to create his own. But he will never be able to create his own without sing in the same as the mother, if Being you like. in sync with the and mother. In sync with her, you see. And I think it is possible, I don't know if this is uh, okay for me to say, you have tried to create your own without her. Yeah. And, and this is the beauty of uh, uh, the people who most inspiring in the world have lost something, and when they try to regain it, they made a difference to the world. Why most of us, and I don't want to generalize, but I see this question coming to me towards my podcast. Yeah. I see lots of people that uh, they look at me, uh, not like a spiritual channel or something. I mean, they ask me to ask future people on my podcast about this. I see in books and I see all these questions that it's uh, kind of like a inside tumult. For, mm. for the people thinking yeah. about this, this, this question constantly. Thinking about the relation with God and the relationship with yourself. I mean, you loving yourself and people lately, they start talking about this. I'm sure, I know that people have been talking about Wayne Dyer and you and other, other people yeah, yeah. for 40 yeah. years. Yes. But people they say, you have to love yourself and love the God in yourself. And some people, they misunderstand that thinking that, oh, but you are not God or... Uh, how, about, how come you, you should love yourself because maybe this is vanity and this is ego. Can you please develop more about this subject? I can only develop one sentence out of all this. If you exist, God doesn't exist. If you don't exist, God exists. So you know what I mean by this? Please. If I try to be somebody, God will not exist. If I remove everything that I'm trying to do, to make people love me, to be good, to be strong, to achieve. If I remove all that, God exists in me. I know it's a little bit abstract, but no, I don't know it, if it makes sense so, to you. It, it could have sound abstract to me many, many years. Now it doesn't sound abstract. Good. So everybody in this life trying to do something and be something. It's okay to do that, but we are caught on the chase. 
and we have lost God because God is not any of that you see and uh, I think the word God has so many associations religious history culture so we use the word now like the word ego for example and everybody has a different interpretation but for me the moment when I lose everything I don't want to do anything uh, you can touch that whatever that inside of us and not only touch it this is in every single person in this world it's the same thing and uh, sometimes in the, in the seminars when I look at these people uh, when my ego is very high and I think my God they here listen to me and I'm helping everybody God disappears so it's about it's mostly about uh, just uh, people have been practicing this in the last 20, 30, 50 years and we know from uh, Course in Miracles, from yeah. uh, uh, Yogananda, from Osho, from everybody, the Western civilization yeah. went to India, uh, Ramdas and uh, all these people, they've been practicing uh, Eckhart Toller constantly about the power of now. And actually here from my understanding and what I've seen in the last years and now you you answer somehow to my mystery, it's about just by breathing you exist and just by being here, nothing yes, else. Yes, yes. That's see, all. Uh, I want to complete the last sentence because what you said is important. When I see people exactly like me, I sense the presence of God. And sometimes I had many shocks and seminars in the past. Somebody smile or talk to me and I saw a great being behind him. It doesn't matter who the person is. It doesn't matter. But these have moments that go away, you see. And then I get caught on my own uh, importance, <laughs> cleverness, whatever. And then I lose all this again, you see. And uh, and to be to my big surprise, I saw it in every ordinary people. Nobody's very special at all. Like like somebody behind their face talking to me. It very in a very few times happened that it completely shocked me. You see, but all, all the people you mentioned over the years, these people have made a, a huge contribution to, to the world and to us to us now even this conversation. But they have something very interesting. Every one of them doesn't have the whole picture. <laughs> have a little bit. Uh, and uh, and they stuck with it. It's better to to hear them all and sense them all and build up the picture ourselves. So what about then uh, for many years being in the, on this race of accomplishing and I'm not enough in accomplishing and not even understanding that I'm not enough or not being, being even aware yes. that I'm running and constantly proving more. I thought for a long time that I was trying, trying to prove other people wrong or being in this competition and then I realized that actually the competition was only with myself. And then uh, once I went also on the so-called spiritual path I was reading, you just have to be, nothing else, just to exist. And then I, I couldn't understand, so how come? Am I going to stay like that and everything is going to happen? Because everybody told me in my family, if you don't wake up if, and if you don't move, and I read uh, this book from this uh, uh, self-help guy who said, you need to make a, a one-year plan, a five-year plan, a ten-year plan. Of course, coming from a gypsy culture, where everything is improvised and, and people they are like just eating, drinking, feeling good and making music. You understand? I mean, so when I was telling them, do you have a five-year plan? They're looking like, for what? I mean, they don't understand this because we are kind of like a, not in a peorative sense or bad sense, we're, we're very tribal. It's all about the values are very, 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 not simple, but very well-grounded. You, you, you are here to make children to survive and to have a family. So th that's the first rules of, of the gypsies, not about uh, making in different ways. That's why maybe 
I think even um, this process of uh, integration, you know, because the people that they're, they're talking about the Roma that we have not been integrated in the European society, it's actually because they are basically always back to the roots, very, very. So for me, coming from that culture, I was trying to read all these things, especially I was formatted in the in the States and educated there. Okay, should I make this plan and I should be disciplined and stuff? But always I've seen that whatever was done from my gut feeling and my instinct always was meaningful and most of the time whatever felt for other cultures improvised. Meaning uh, everybody got ready for two weeks for that concert or everybody practiced in the next two weeks. And I, I don't recommend this for this. I'm, I'm telling you as a, as a, as a question. Yeah. Um, maybe I was so involved in the the present moment in those two weeks, being in a garden, being with people, feeling feeling things, that when I went on stage, I played without being prepared. And that thing came out much better than the other times when I was prepared and I could not, people in the, in the, in the hall would not feel anything. Here would feel all my emotions. Yes, yes. Uh, this is actually how I work as well. Even if I want to make an interview, I prefer I don't see any questions. It's the same thing. Uh, but, but I think when you spoke now, you have many questions mixed up together. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, because the, the main question was, I always uh, been this type of uh, improvised guy. Yes. I mean, for, for some people, even for my girlfriend right now, we, we were last four months on a TV show, yeah. and uh, she gets prepared the week before, and I get pre prepared just the day of the, of the uh, of the concours yeah. and uh, I listen a little bit and I go there and 99% of the time I'm not sure if it's going to come out good or not and it always somehow miraculously it comes out good yes yes of course yes when I go and prepare and I'm like oh my god I have to do this I have to do this it comes out like crap of course this is how the controlling people are <laughs> they, they have everything you see if you prepare something it's very interesting. You actually creating a picture of what it's going to be. Yes? And this is impossible to do. So you will never have anything new. You, you, see, you see what I'm trying to say? Like, if you have a goal in life and you focus on your goal, you'll be limited by the goal because what you're going to create is much bigger than the goal, but you have stopped yourself into what you want it to look like. So when you don't prepare, you can go beyond what you could even imagine that you can do. That's why I don't like goals, because uh, people set goals, they have actually made the future looks uh, in a certain way, which they can have much more than that. So somehow, by the goals, you limit yourself. Not, not you put it in a box, you put it. Not only limit, the goal is not new. It's already created. It's not new. And life is changing every moment. So you're basically taking your past to your future. You have already. So if, if you, if, you see, I, I think people will misunderstand this conversation because there are certain things you have to rehearse. Of, of course, course, of course. course. But you need to go beyond that. Uh, the, the, this culture we live in is focused too much on achievement. An achievement from the mind. And the mind wants to make everything absolutely clear how it should look like. But, but when you get to do it, the circumstances, your breathing, the air, the light, everything is different. So you, you, you're taking something in the past, fix it in the future. It's, it's not going to work that way. But it, it's functional, but it's not going to work. But I, 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 I want to go back to something about when you talked about gypsies. And uh, you talked about integration. And I, I, I spotted something I want to tell you. Integration would never work. Impossible. It's not a choice. You know what I mean? 
No, please. You cannot teach people to integrate at all. You cannot, I, I said it in the seminar yesterday, you cannot choose to forgive. You cannot choose to accept. You cannot choose to have uh, compassion. You cannot choose to be grateful. If you choose, if you, that means you can learn it. You cannot learn this. You cannot teach people to accept gypsy people. You cannot. Their consciousness must be very high. In order to? In order to be with everybody the same way. That's the problem. And I think this, all this attempt of integration actually calls in the opposite effect. Yeah. I, I think so. I, I've realized, uh, uh, I don't know how the... Mm. I mean, I didn't prepare any, any, any questions yeah, yeah, or anything yeah, yeah, about yeah. this. You see, it's all uh, yeah. for uh, yeah. uh, free. I realized in the last five years and going yeah. through my uh, through my, res my own research yes. that uh, most of the it's the gypsy problem the Roma problem, yeah. it's not yeah. a, it's not a social problem it's mostly um, I'm not a doctor or a yeah. therapist yeah. but I'm just saying it's most mostly an emotional problem because transgenerational we've been slaves in Romania for 500 years yeah. and transgenerational there are a lot of trauma giving on and on and on of course, as of a testament to the, to the kids. So there are a certain type of uh, rules, not written rules, mm -hmm. through the genetics yeah, and to, to epigenetics yeah, yeah, yes. that they've been giving on and I see the, uh, the, the behavioral, uh, basically on the emotional filters that we grew up, all of us, on the things that they are like food, drugs, alcohol, uh, gambling and and stuff and not not only this but i can see the way things they are i mean one of the most amazing things that i've seen uh, roma people they seem from outside from you and anybody that's not roma that we are always enjoying ourselves dancing playing and and, and being constantly in a party it's actually the opposite roma people they they don't enjoy themselves when they listen to music, uh, happy music. Mm. When they listen to happy music, they are sad. And when they are listening to sad music, they start crying. Mm. So it's, it's completely opposite, even the emotions. I don't, it's, it's, makes sense? Yeah, yeah. You, you know that uh, in Egypt, we have a lot of gypsies, but you can never identify them. I know, yeah. Because we are all the same color, more or less. <laughs> yes. Not only that, they, they are in the business singing and dancing also. But they have blended so much, they, we don't call gypsies anymore. You see? Yeah. It, it's, it's blended in a, because the culture is very emotional, you see? Exactly. The, the reason they stand out in the West, because the West has put so much focus on the mind and the intellect. And uh, the East is not. So in the East, they disappear. In fact, they all come from the East anyway. I think they originated in India. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And they have moved all over the world. But they stand out in the West more than in the East because of uh, the, the, the... The emotional Yes, yeah, they are more emotional and then uh, that will not focus much in... Uh, the, the West dedicated its world into the power of the mind, not, not the power of emotions, you see. And it's important because you can see how everything is perfect in, in the West, but people have more depression, more mental illnesses, these are emotional problems, actually, because they have not allowed that part of us to manifest as much, you see. And the, the, the connection people have in the East help in the emotions, which we don't have here. But having said that, the whole East is turning into the West anyway. Yeah. It, there is no East anymore, because they are all want to be like the West. Like the West. Like, for example, we work in Vietnam a lot, you're talking in dollars all the time. Everybody wants to be American, you see. And the, the East are in a difficult time at the moment because they, they copy in the West, but with very little resources to be like the West because the intellectual revolution has had its own processes. So people in, in, in the West can cope with the mind, but the people in the East cannot cope with the mind. But they're stepping into it at the same time. So they are in total confusion at the moment, actually.
It's a process. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. But they, they jump in faster because they have something to see. Yeah. But the West created by themselves, they didn't have it. 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 it like, like for example, in the Arab world, for example, when you give them very sophisticated weapon, they cannot handle it. But in Europe, they can handle it because it has been a process of creating something, building, building, building. They know how to deal with nuclear bombs, for example. But if you get to the Arabs, they blow everybody up. You see, they have not uh, had the culture to grow into expanding yeah, this yeah. area, you see. But I think uh, th this is very difficult, what, what I, I, I observed. Integration will never happen, ever until we mature ourselves in our consciousness, when we go much higher, when we begin to see a human being as human being. What are some of the ways? Uh, I know that uh, if I'm asking you how, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm asking you for me and for the people in general, some of the ways that we can raise our consciousness. To raise it. Uh, there are many answers to this, but the only one I, I can say that I use in the seminars all the time. That's, that's what essence is all about. Yeah, we started the conversation by talking about our defenses, do you remember? Yes? Everybody needs to work in such a way to find out exactly what the defenses are. If we are able, this will happen through work. You need to work with a person whose consciousness is higher than you are, not lower. And a lot of therapeutic work, a lot of seminar, a lot of courses done by people with a low level of consciousness. You cannot go higher than the person who's helping you. You see what I mean? So you have to go to a person who's higher than you, like a parent. Like a guru, like a priest. Uh, like yeah. A... yeah, but uh, yeah, and but even these people also, you don't know what happened to them as well. So uh, this is one, one problem that we have. The, if you manage to discover and see your defense, your strategy, your protection, the hundreds of names at the moment, yes? Your triggers. Uh, the trigger triggers the defense. Exactly. Yeah? If you manage to get that, to get there, and the next part is the most difficult, but, but is, is achievable. People will never get it until I say it 5,000 times. When you see it, you do absolutely nothing. You don't fix it. At all. But you, you need to see it. When we see it, we automatically want to fix it because we don't like it. You see? And I say the sentence is, awareness is the cure. Nothing else. You see? We just... The, the purpose of the defense, because it doesn't like what's happening. So when we discover it, we don't like it. It's the same problem. So we want to change it. And we want to change it, we'll change it with another defense, you see. It will take a, a huge amount of courage, commitment, and work and devotion to oneself to be able to face what we're dealing with. So when... When you see it, you said? Yes. And it doesn't affect you anymore? When you see it, it will go away. But you know why? Because you, for the first time, you will see that you see it. You understand? Yeah. It is not you. You are, you are the observer. Yes, you will see it. Then you realize that is not you. But, but this is a rare opportunity. All the work I do is try to get people to be conscious of it. But the programming we have is so difficult. I think Einstein said something wonderful. He said, uh, you cannot solve a problem with the same brain that created in the first place. So we, we are programmed. So we'll take some work. And it cannot be done by a conversation like this. It has to be done experientially. It has to be done in atmosphere, in an environment that will allow you to see it and not to feel judged 
or hurt or pushed that you should do something different. It has already been created because you want to survive other people. You see? So when you are with other people who... You, people don't have to judge you. Their presence will judge you. You see? And, and I think this is also related to previous conversation about gypsy people. Every, everybody who has some kind of difference, yes, no matter how we pretend that we're okay with, we're okay with them, they know it. <laughs> they know. Like, for example, homosexuals, they'll spot the person immediately who doesn't like homosexuals. They smell them. You see? So if, if I am a foreign person in, a, in England or somewhere, and British people are so cool with the foreign people, not really, yeah? But they, they don't speak, yeah? Which I actually like that also. But you can, you can feel it in your body straight away. So when, when, when an environment have people who are loving and helping you to see you are, it's not possible because half of these people are judging, yes? But, but, but it, this is where the music is, <laughs> the energy. So you, it, it, it has to be some, some people with a very high level of consciousness and understanding and compassion. I, I haven't arrived at this yet, but I had glimpses when I was working in a hospital with uh, very severe cases in England. They used to send people to me um, for therapy. For example, somebody killed somebody and they are on bail. Somebody abused children and they are waiting for trial and the, the family is messed up and these people used to come to, to me in a clinic and um, the moment I saw the person, not what they did, the person started to transform. You see the difference? It, but whenever these people come to us, we used to have meetings and discussion, we only saw what they did. We didn't see them. Like Be, being what, judged but what they've done, not what, what they yeah, are. We lost the person. Like even now, when you know somebody has cancer, yes? You only see the cancer. You don't yeah. see the person anymore. So when you see the person, you see cancer straight away. Why? Because we're terrified of our own. You see? Uh, so I am so scared of cancer. I see somebody with cancer, I lose the person. I don't see them anymore. So every, every move, every word. And if, if you see this person, as a person, they probably can heal, actually. But in the presence, I am not here anymore. You see, I'm already scared. So I'm actually maybe activating. And when you go to the, the medical profession, that's all they think about. If you go to the doctor, like a very good doctor, the entire focus of the doctor is your illness, not you. Did you realize this? They don't think about you. They think about them. Remember yesterday a woman asked me about the adoption? Yeah. I didn't want to answer the question. I want to see her. Answering the question. No, I want to see her as a person. Yeah. I don't want to look at a woman who adopted children. I want to feel that woman because if her conscience is clear, her adoption is okay. You see? But she's asking me questions to say, is it good or bad? So I... I moved away from this. I came back because if, if she would never understand if I don't answer the question, I had to answer it in the end. But I, I want to see a person who wants to have children, who wants to enjoy life, who wants to enjoy bringing up life. She wants to be a mother. You see, I have an idea before. Yes, adoption is good, adoption is bad. All my list is coming up. You see, from all my training and learning and books I read. But then I realized, I need to see this woman, not to see what she's done. I, I observe you, if you permit yeah. me, when you, but not with a judging. Yeah, yes. Just, I observe you, yeah. and I, I intuitively felt, let's yeah. say, that actually you were going through a process, because yeah. I've seen you closing your eyes, and you, at least as, as I yeah. see it from outside, yeah. Yeah. especially that was very near you, yeah. and I, I observed that you actually went through a process where you let go the cognitive and you're, you're trying yeah, to align yeah. yourself to feel as much as possible with her. That, that's what was my feeling. Yeah, yeah, it is, but, but it happens spontaneously. I don't do it consciously. Be, because, you see, actually, to adopt a child 
is not good. If you adopt a child for you to be a parent, then a child takes responsibility for your happiness. You see? It depends and, on, on yeah, your exactly. And this was my immediate reaction. But then I, I said, no, no, I need to wait. I need to see. And I, did, I said something to the group, not everything applied to everybody. You see? And I need to, I need to see. And this woman became, was genuine, was a loving woman. And she didn't have the energy of somebody who wants somebody to adopt a child for her to be, to be okay. happy. To be, yeah. okay. there, there is some level of this. There, there are people, I, I've met people, yeah. I, I used to have many years, uh, yeah. a friend of mine, uh, uh, not my girlfriend, a friend that yeah. she told me uh, at the moment, and I'm not saying in a judging way, yeah, yeah. she told me at the moment that I was young, I was like 20, 18 years old, 29 years old, and she said, uh, I know I'm okay. I, I have no job, I, I make money, I have my house, and I, mm. and I know why I'm not no, uh, no happy. Because mm. I don't have a, a, a child. If I yeah. have a child, I would be the, the happiest. And I'm like, I couldn't judge it at the moment because I, I was coming from a family that thought me that having a child is not good. Yes. So I was thinking, Damian, maybe it's maybe it's your own filter. Yes, yes. But then I waited and I see. Let, let me see when she's going to have, have a child. Then she had a child and she was she was still not happy. Of course. And I asked her, I'm like, don't you remember that you're saying that? Yeah, but you, you don't understand. There is so much responsibility. But but you said at the moment, like you said before, that when you think about something in the yeah, future, that's right. you said at the moment that this this is the only thing that is, that's going to make you ultimately happy. You, you see, people ask me about what is the purpose of life, yes? I tell them there's no purpose. If you have a purpose of life, you will become a slave to your purpose of life. And then you create a purpose. Let's imagine you have achieved the purpose. What happened after? You can die. You are done. You will actually die living. Exactly. Because you don't have any more purpose that, to live. That's it. You see, life has no purpose. It, like, the purpose of life is to live it. And that's it. Because it will keep giving you things all the time. It will. So you mean here, be so open to, the, to every event that happens in your life daily, and be so able to adapt that you enjoy every single thing, you, good you or bad. Yeah, I know. You see, the most difficult thing we have now in this conversation is, is what we're saying. Because it's impossible, impossible to perceive it. For even, even when I'm saying it as well, for me too. Life is only about this moment and nothing else. We, we've heard this before a million times, but we can't do it. We can't. But, but we can get closer, 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 the more we work on ourselves. It is actually nothing else except this now, as we talk. There's nothing else. Can you imagine living like this? Now, just now, this moment? Uh, now the people who will argue with this will say, but I need to go on holiday, I need to go to work, I need to, do of course you need to do this. But, but these are like, I, if you drive in, in the street, you have to learn how to drive, of course. Yeah. But we're talking not about these things. We're talking about our presence, our emotion, who we are now, this moment together. And it's not, a, it's not an abstract thing, what, what you're talking about. And it's not about being uh, constantly. I, I've been also through, through, this, through this process. Uh, it's not about being constantly on a state of meditation. Because then you go, you meditate uh, 20 minutes or 40 minutes or 50 minutes. I liked being in that state. And then when, when the reality or our actual reality hit me, I was like, no, 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 I want to go back in the meditation. Yeah, you cannot stay constantly in meditation. But you see, meditation is the biggest problem we have. <laughs> it's, it's a disaster, actually. And uh, how can you teach people to meditate? I, I, everything has to come to you, you see. I remember I was uh, once I was uh, 11 years old, 12 years old, and I was coming home from school, and had had so much trouble in my family, so many things went wrong, and I was consumed by all the problems that happened in my family, and I went home. There was nobody in the house, and I was lying on the bed, and suddenly I got a very big shock, and I I can't even put it into words. My shock was. My God. Everything happened before doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. Where is it? 
I was, I was so young and, uh, and I realized there is no past. There isn't. It is, it is uh, where is it? You can't. You can, where is it? It's nowhere. And uh, I have never recovered from this. But we constantly live in our past, you see. But what, what, what touched me the most is I didn't read it and nobody told me. No, it came, but when things come this way, this is the real, the real learning. But we have so many books telling us there's no past. So what we do when we fight with somebody, we tell them this is in the past, forget about it. We're not convinced. Or, or we tell them, uh, you've uh, done this to me, or you've done uh, yeah, that for yeah. you. But we're not convinced, you see. But actually, uh, there is no past anymore. It, you can touch it. You can, I even question that we have memories. I question. I question we have unconscious. I question that. It's something else, I think. I don't think there's any memory in our brain at all. I think it's, it's, a, it's a patterns, yes? When things meet together, they create something to come to our consciousness. And this pattern may be similar to patterns that happened before. I was thinking at a certain moment, I, I read uh, once a, a, a quote, and uh, it impacted me so much. Yeah. And then somehow I try with my small mind to, to translate it somehow, but it made sense. The, the, the quote was saying that if you live uh, in the present and the beautiful moments and you enjoy every single moment, when you are old, you'll have nice stories to, 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 to say, tell, to, to tell. tell because you live. But then I realized one more thing immediately. So if you think about the past, even in the good moments, that was not a good moment, it's because you, never, you were never present. Ah, maybe, yes. If you are always present, as you said, and you are... In and you see you you not not being grateful like you said by by controlling by being present really present you are always gonna have good memories in the in the future yeah but this is the problem you see you cannot make yourself present you are or you are not like meditation you cannot sit and meditate it has to come to you you don't go to it you see yeah it's impossible uh, I can't believe that people sit trying to meditate. I can't believe it. How can you sit and stop thinking? But, uh, you know, the whole life is meditation. Now, our conversation is meditation. If we are in the conversation, if I'm sitting here thinking what time we're going to finish, what I'm going to eat after, that's, that's not meditation. But this conversation is a meditation. And uh, the thing that I, I find it total joke, like people learning to be meditation teachers. I, I don't know what it means, really, you see. But, but the thing that has always been in my mind a lot is the past doesn't exist, but if something went wrong and it's very painful for me, I will use the past, I will use it to not take responsibility for what I have to face. My, my narrative, my story. My yeah, like uh, I have a problem with a friend and I was upset about something they're doing and I tell them, yes, you know, when I was a child this happened to me and it's true. But I need to take responsibility for what I am feeling now, you see. Uh, I, I am angry about this. I have to deal with that. But I can also run back and say, you know, I was brought up in a bad way and I was deprived. I do this and I didn't have, that's why I'm angry about it. What I'm doing this, actually, I am dumping on, on that person and I'm also not willing to evolve in such a way not to allow this to keep taking me out of the presence all the time. And one more thing that I've realized with my own narr narrative and my own story yeah, yeah. is that I don't want to go on a, on a deeper, different type of path with the conversation, okay. but let's say maybe I chose that when I came in this life, or maybe what I think is that all my all these experiences made me who I am today. 
I wouldn't be who I am today if I yeah. didn't go through all these experiences. Yeah, but yeah, it's true. But you see, um, I when I came from England to Egypt, yes, I couldn't speak English, and uh, I spent time with a few friends of mine, uh, Egyptian friends, and uh, I realized something. All I wanted to do, I wished I can speak English like English people. <laughs> I, because I used to say, if I speak like them, yes, it will be amazing. Because I, I couldn't answer the phone, you see, the phone rings. I went to the same thing when yes. I went to the States. Okay. That's why I love so much. Okay. When the phone rings, someone speak, I couldn't answer because I need to see the person at least to, to understand uh, what he uh, says. To figure out what they try to tell me, you see. Then I had the realization. I said, what if I invest on myself in such a way that I can be bigger than them? Which I did. Now, whatever I say, yes, I, I never thought one day I will be doing seminars and English people are participants. Because the culture I come from, yes, maybe, maybe gypsies has something similar, I don't know. We look at Europeans are very high, and we think they are much more superior than us. And uh, it's something integrated. They occupied us. We were slaves, the same, yes? And uh, so we have admiration and hate at the same time for them, you see? Which is inside us, also epigenetically, transgenerational. That, that's right. So we, we always feel handicapped. Yeah. And I, I thought, I can deal with that. I, I can. So I, I worked hard. I worked hard and I, I rise. Now, when I say something, they listen to me, but before they wouldn't listen to me. You see? Then I, I, I met some of these friends now, after all this year. They are still in the same place. They are complaining about the country, the culture, discrimination. They can't find any work. Then I arrive. We have a responsibility. I and I spent maybe 45 years in England or more. Not one time a person told me where you're from. And what I mean is in, in a discrimination way. Like nobody ever told me. Never had any problems. And every job I did, I went to the top. No problem. And I've seen people struggling, struggling all the time. We have a responsibility to ourselves, to raise ourselves in such a way, yes, and and we can make everything happen as we want. You see, I think you've probably done something like this, but but we were motivated also by also fear as well. Exactly, definitely. Yeah, yes. And uh, and I would add something to what you said. It happened to me the same with the, with the Americans. Yes. But there was one thing that I used as my defensive. Yes. People, they wouldn't ask me for where I am, and they would be like, wow, amazing, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. And then I would say, as a defensive, in order to make myself, to, in order to prove them as an yeah, yeah. instrument, yeah. that look, I'm coming from a shitty life, from a gypsy, yeah, yeah, and yeah. look where I am. Oh, I'm a gypsy from Romania. Uh, I would say it, it, but then I realized, Damian, stop, people, they didn't ask you. That's right. So I, I needed to make it so dramatic to show yeah. them, look, you are from here, I'm coming from there, and I went over you. And I'm like, stop, don't say that anymore, because you're using this only as a, again, yeah. as a defense. You, you see, uh, let's go back to the beginning, actually. It's very important. I, I, I'm i writing about these things on and off. The, the life is, our existence is life, and evolution is magical. Because the person who's deprived of their mother, yes, supposed to be like the biggest pain ever. But uh, as I said earlier in the beginning, in order for this person to survive and create his healing and peace, yes, will contribute to evolution, actually. So there are no mistakes in his life whatsoever. And this is a mindset, because I have noticed the people who come to seminar, almost 80% of the people determined to be angry with the parents forever. 
and you cannot convince them otherwise. There is no way. Every day we do work and do things, and some actually finally started to learn from the course how to move on. You see, that's uh, I even think all mental illnesses come from this. And you know what it's all about? Injustice. It's all about that. The human consciousness needs justice. Uh, let's go back to the beginning again. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting to your wavelengths, so mixing everything together. <laughs> emotions, our emotions, need to be stabilized. Yes? Because it, it cannot be contained. Yeah? The stabilization of emotion is justice. You see? If it's not stabilized, it's injustice. And this is where everything starts. All the problems in the world start. The person who is stable in themselves is able to stabilize their emotions so they don't need to fight for justice anymore. And I've been asking myself these questions, yeah. of course, yeah. for many years. I was at peace with my mother and my father many, yeah. many, many years. And then for the last one or so years, uh, not only that I made peace with them, I am not, I'm not making this as a uh, regulatory exercise. I just feel it. I'm thanking them every single moment, or well, not every single moment, many times throughout the day, or mentally, or my father, he's not alive, but I honor him and I thank him for life, which is the, the most precious gift. Yes. Because if these two people, they wouldn't have made this crazy mistake, this moment where something happened, yeah? This yeah. moment of love, this moment of pff, like a flower that grew, I, I, I wouldn't be here. And all of us. And then I, I've been asking myself for everybody that I went to so many seminars, like even yesterday mm -hmm. were other seminars. Most of the people, they are so pissed with their parents that yeah. these people did nothing else than give, give us life. By the way, you remind me of Oprah Winfrey. You know, you, know, you know her? Of course. Her story is the same. Her mom and dad had sex under a tree or something and never seen each other again. And, and, and she was born like lost, but look where she is. Yeah. But w what you're saying is very important, but uh, is a big challenge for people. Um, you have arrived there after what, all these years of work. The trap people fall into, they get to that stage, but, but not like you. They think they accepted their parents. They think, yes? But deep inside, no. And this is very dangerous. And I tell these people, it's better to be angry with them until you learn how to be okay. So their anger is denied because they want, they want to show the world and, and pretend and, and, and gain stability this way. But it, it, does, it, it takes some work for some people, unless the person is, is a variance, you know what I mean? Like different. There are very few people come to this world that are odd, like uh, I think I call them chosen. Some people are chosen in this life. And I, if you go to dangerous area now, therapists, politicians, must be chosen not to choose the, the job. You see what I mean? To be the chosen ones. The, no, the, the, the must, uh, a politician who wants to be a politician, the fact they want to be a politician, they shouldn't be. The same with therapist. The fact the person wants to be a therapist, they shouldn't be. And how, the whole thing now is uh, commercial, business, money, prestige, uh, power, yes? They are, they, they serve, I think this, every time a generation comes, I don't know who planned this. This is beyond me at the moment. There are like few people come in with very specific message, message. And here's the hardest thing I'm going to tell you. These people don't know they have a message. You understand? They don't know. Um, have you seen the film Gandhi? Yeah. There was a line in, the Gand in Gandhi, I, it blew my mind, totally. Um, 
um, there was uh, Gandhi, there was a meeting w when it came to the end when Pakistan was being created and there was a lot of conflict between India and, okay. yes, between the Muslim and Hindus. And they all told Gandhi, we, you have to tell us what to do. We just don't know what to do. He walked out of the meeting and he walked in the field. And those two American women were following him. And they were having a conversation together. And one said to the other, I actually think Gandhi has a message and the world doesn't understand it. And the other one said to her, I'm not sure Gandhi understands it either. <laughs> I thought that was amazing, absolutely amazing. So I think he is one of these people. He's one of these people, he had a message, but if he knew what the message was, exactly. it probably wouldn't be the same. The message was him, him. Was himself, his himself. presence as a person. And you may have found that in your singing. It may have triggered by your mother, of course. You see, by, by the intensity of whatever was suffering, yeah. I have last last week a concert in Bucharest, and uh, there were four thousand people, and uh, my mother was in the in the hall, and uh, most of the people there was a lot of moments my my music it's gypsy music it was the end it's very yeah. energetic dancing and stuff I will show you a little bit when we finish, but throughout the show there are some moments that they were extremely 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 emotional yes and most of the people said an amazing show I mean thousands of of messages. An amazing show, amazing Damian, good music, technically, whatever. But in 90% of the messages were like, so much emotions were crying, so much emotions were crying. And now that you're telling me this, it's, it's more about the emotion and about, about the energy and the whatever my culture represents. Yes. It's yes. all about emotion. Yes, it is. And I've seen this obsessively on my Facebook and on my messages. And now that we're talking about emotions... About 20 years ago, I've seen, a, I was in the States, and I've seen, a, I've seen this quote, and it obsessed me, and I ask, when I get the privilege to, 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 to meet such a chosen ones, in my opinion, like you, I, get it, I, get, I always ask this question, uh, what is the meaning behind this, or what this uh, genius wanted to, to, to say? Nikola Tesla said that the secrets of the universe, they are in like energy, frequency, and vibration. Hmm. What these three words means to you? <laughs> you see, I, you know that I, uh, I had very difficult time at school. I, I, I'm very dyslexic. I didn't understand anything at all. And uh, uh, I really didn't understand nothing. And they told my parents, take him out he will never learn anything, you see. And uh, when you say words like this, yeah, I don't really focus on words at all. I, uh, I think words um, are symbols. They, 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 they are, don't mean anything. Because we have different, if you say the same words, different people, they have a completely different meaning to them. Definitely. So, is energy means energy, we don't know, we really don't know. So, so when I hear these words, I don't have, uh, I, I never limit myself to the words and what they mean. So when you say that, uh, and I'm, uh, then when I studied psychology and therapy and to a very high level, I realized something that we keep inventing meanings all the time. We are, we are meaning ma making machines. Yes, and I'm not sure. It's like we are dissecting everything to smaller, 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 because we're so desperate to find out who we are. So in the end, we'll we'll know everything about nothing. What was going to happen to us? So sorry when you said this word. It, the, I didn't get any a an anything to it. No, no, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, most I, I could. I, I, my initial reaction was to make something up and tell you. <laughs> because people, people, they talk about. That's why uh, I was saying now lately. Yeah. After I read it, did people talk about? Yeah, we are not on the right frequency, or I don't feel yeah, the yeah. right vibe, or uh, I mean, people they they uh, combine the two. I mean, like frequency, vibration, or you talk about the right energy and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But see, the nearest I can come to to this is that 
when you hear the most amazing piece of music, yes, or symphony or something, something happens, you can cry, yes? How can you put words on this? You can say energy, you can say this, and I think this is, there is nobody talking, there is no explanation, there is no story, but how does this get into you? And I, I think this is a very amazing level of consciousness for, for the emotion to touch something that un, untouched. You can't explain a kiss, you can't explain love. Yes, explain yeah, the same, the same, yes. And I think this, this, this kind of energy, uh, this what, I don't know what to call it, I'm not going to put a name on it, is the same energy that a mother and a child have. Exactly the same. Throughout uh, yesterday and, and today, I've seen going through this, my own parameter of, uh, yeah, yeah. of uh, words, and I, I, I've been watching you so carefully. Yeah. Uh, although from a young kid, I was in school the worst, if you cannot imagine, uh, with dyslexic and ADHD and the worst, worst, worst student ever in the history of yeah. the world. Uh, I, I've seen that you repeat, you repeat it uh, very many times, the relation of the child with the mother, which essentially we yeah, know yeah, each other, yeah, that, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. most important. Where do you see the father in this context? Oh, th this is something I always say, sometimes I forget. The father play a critical role in two ways. One, the father influence on the mother goes to the child. So it comes indirectly. Like, if the mother is affected by the father's relationship, yeah, it will destabilize her to go to the child. So he has another indirect route to the child. The second part of this, the, uh, the father's role is to teach the child to be aggressive. And the mother teach the child to, to be loving. You see, but you need the aggression later, not in the beginning. You see, and to to make your child aggressive is very good because you need to be rough, you need to handle life. You see, so the mother first, the father comes later, and uh, uh, this is the role of the father. And if you watch healthy family, you see the father throw the child in the air run with them, but the mother goes, no, no, stop, stop, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. don't. <laughs> you see, you see how the, yeah. she wants the child. She's afraid not to break. Or uh, yes, that's right. She wants to be gentle. The father is rough, but you can't be gentle in the life. You will not survive. You need also to have some, uh, see, when, uh, when uh, children, except boys, been taken care of too much, they will not be able to handle a relationship later because they'll be too soft. You see, they need that. Uh, part of we have a, we are blessed me and my girlfriend to have a, a wonderful amazing amazing son I will show pictures he's 40, yeah, 40 yeah. years old beautiful very very extremely very smart he, yeah. he reads at 40 years old but not with us teaching him just him he's, he's got a very talented musical ear and uh, uh, Christina my girlfriend she's very very gentle as a, and right. it's not like me I'm very agitated okay. and stuff she's very calm and yeah. stuff and uh Sometimes he wants something and she's raising him, I mean, all together, and her mother. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's the female energy. And him being raised in such a loving uh, environment, sometimes he wants something and he doesn't get it. Or uh, by mistake, uh, one day she, she, he has long hair yeah. and she fixes uh, his hair and it hurt him. And he said, Oh, you hurt me. And, she, and he's like, Oh, sorry. And she's like, yeah. And she's like, Damian, how come she be? He's like, because he's a man. What yes, do you want to yes. say? To be like a girl, he's like, he was like, Ugh! but he, he he got out of him that, like that, that gorilla, that like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like a man. Yeah, you see, here, here is another problem, you see. Um, unfortunately, um, women cannot handle boys. <laughs> and they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Uh, because the boys have this kind of aggression, yeah, and uh, it will hurt the mother. 
And this one, the father is very important. And when in the family, so I'll divert a little bit. When the man is disempowered as a man, it will be terrible for the boys. Terrible. Because they will not have control. And uh, I, I made a research on this once years ago, and I mentioned it a couple of times. There is a, you know, in America, you have a lot of um, gangs, boy, boys, not girls gangs. England, a lot of gangs. Uh, while I'm working in this area, doing some research, I discovered something amazing. I looked at um, some gangs uh, and with, with, with a team of people, we realized that every single member of these gangs, the father is not at home. They're out of control. Because a woman will not be able to control the boys. Um, it's, it's not her job anyway. And I realized, and I saw in some cultures, like Arabic cultures, the boy reaches a certain age, he keep away from the mother, he goes with his father to the desert here, horses, they don't connect anymore. Uh, they need to learn. To the ways of the men. Not only, they need to be uh, controlled by a man, you see. But now we're in the West here, we have a big problem because the men are not men anymore. Like you said yesterday. Yeah, and that, so, that was my next question. Okay, so the man is not, it doesn't have the, the guts to to control the child. Not only the the children in the West control everybody. The in every house the child is in control, not the parents anymore. And, have, and the man doesn't have the, the guts uh, not to control the woman, not even to face the woman. Not he to can't face anything nowadays. The, you see, this has been my area working in, in the health service in England. In the, in the home, it, it was terrible. I couldn't take it anymore. The, the father shouted at the child, yes? The child called the police. And the police said, can take the father out of the house. Yes? Or the children learn many things. They go to school and say, my father touched me, for example. They didn't touch. Or maybe friendly kiss him or something, yes? The parents out of the house for six months till they investigate the whole thing. And the children realize they have power. Yes? And the system supports them. Even in the school, the teacher cannot discipline a child anymore. So men lost their authority. With, the, with, their, ki with, with their children? With children. Uh, and, and also with the females. Of course. But it, it went the other extreme. Of course, maybe in the past, men were too aggressive, hurt the Violent. women. Yeah. But now we have gone to the other extreme. So. The parents I've seen, and in, in, in I was working with somebody, are afraid of their kids. Can you imagine? And, uh, and, and uh, I don't know about Romania, but in, say, Germany, Sweden, something, it's terrible. Like the, the father are ordered to leave the house for six months, a huge amount of investigation. I know, because so, uh, so, for you, you are in, you are in your field as a, yes, as a medical. Yes, that's right. But for me... I've seen that 20 some years ago when I went to the, to the States. Yes. Coming from Romania, it was a gypsy yeah, where yeah, the father, yeah, when yeah, he comes in the house, yeah, everybody's yeah. like, That's whatever. Right. And when I when I was hearing these cases on the TV or, or yeah. on the news, I was like, what's happening here in, in terms of culture? Like a, a kid called, he was five years or seven years old, says my father and this is my mother, and then they would take away the parents. There's another problem also, bigger than that. The States... The, the welfare states, the, 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 the system now, if a child reaches, say, 16, 18, and want to fight with their parents, yes, the government can give them home and give them money. Yeah. Can yes. take them to court and they can win against their no, parents? No, no, the government will give them straight away because if they, if they say, I'm leaving the house, yes, the government has to give everybody a place to stay and have to give them money to survive, and have to give money every month. In Scotland, they give every 18 years old 1,500 pounds a month. Yes? Now, then the child will say, well, fuck you, I don't need you anymore. I don't need the parents anymore. Uh, don't, don't tell me what to do. So now they lost the respect and the wisdom and the resources of the parents. They confuse independence with... Uh, uh, Getting rid of the of, of the roots. Yeah, because really, the, I say that democracy is not a good idea in the family. You have to have some kind of dictate. You have some some kind of control. Actually, I give you a very small example. 
They're going out together, yes? And the parents say to the child, where would you like to go? The child say, mm, I want to go there. Okay, we have to go there. I've seen that. Why the child have to decide? I've, I've seen that with, yeah. uh, with Andre, with my son. Yeah. And sometimes we made a mistake, we go to the mall. I mean, yeah, yeah. here you're talking to a kid that I don't remember to have, uh, to having two games in my entire life. Yeah, I mean, yeah, my yeah, game was yeah. a, a ball made out of uh, socks yeah, or yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And now we go to Andre to the mall, and I'm not saying in a bad way, yeah, no, no, and we go to the store, and we are like, he's got already at home 5,000 yeah. games yeah. or whatever toys. And then we go, what do you want? And, and the, the, the child, he's at four years old, he's like, I don't yeah. know what. Because it's better, and I told Christina, Christina, we take a toy, and we, this is the toy that we chose for you, we, yeah. we give yeah. it to you. you rather than having, because he doesn't know, he's yeah. confused. This is very tricky, and it's good what you're saying, because... Um, of course he likes something, and we have to get him something he likes. But when a child decides, yes, he does not feel safe. You understand? Wow. He wants to learn that there's somebody bigger than me guiding me to make a decision. See how difficult it is? And I, 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 I want to go next to... Um to a subject that has been, uh, uh, it's not my defensive or my trigger, but <laughs> it's been, uh, I've been challenged in, in the last couple of years. Yeah. After going through my, uh, my, my childhood and my life and revising my entire life and yeah. going in the last years yeah, to these yeah. therapies and raising mm -hmm. somehow as much as I can, my consciousness, I, um, I'm working on myself still and I understand yeah. that it's, yeah, it's a journey. We all are, yeah. But I'm many, many times concerned about me as a father. Yes. I mean, maybe I'm not present there. Yesterday he's got fever and I wasn't there because I was single. Or I'm working too much and I'm just seeing him some days I don't see him at all because I yeah. run there and there. Or I see him only one hour. Or when I'm with them, him one hour, the phone is ringing and I, I need to answer because it's somebody for a gig. Or, so I feel, I feel constantly this guilt trying to be the parent or the mother or the father that I wasn't, that I, I hadn't, or basically on what I've read, not to screw up, not, not to, to do something, to, to do something wrong to him. So this thing started like more than working on me, start obsessing me, like, how can I be? And I know when you're trying to be a good parent, you're not a parent, or like, like, like you say. So what do you have to say about this? Very, very uh, okay. You need to know, we need to know that the role of parenting for mother and father is very different. Yes? The father role is protection only. And the mother role is connection only. You see? Protection and providing. Uh, yes. Yeah. But obviously now everything is mixed up. Because now the situation family is the man cannot earn anything. And the woman can earn more. Uh, women more successful. The whole, the whole thing is mixed up, okay? But I, I don't want to be limited by the past also. Maybe this is how it's going to be. Maybe the world is going to change anyway. But uh, um, I, I tell you a story that um, I was given once a talk in a hospital about parenting and things. And uh, a woman shared the story to the group that touched me deeply. She, she said, I've been working in maternity unit for many years. You know maternity unit is when yes. the children who were born prematurely put in a machine, yes? And uh, after all these years, I have seen something repeating that's amazing. I said, what is this? She said, always the parents come together, yes? The woman, the mother, runs and she wants to touch child and the man standing in the corner doing nothing but then she started to observe something later she said i start realizing the man is looking at the machine wants to make sure it's working you see this is how we take care of our kids we need to make sure everything is working but you don't have to run around and touch them because we can't do it my andrew was born prematurely yes and 
Te vet nem, hogy a body's moment, I get to fear, like, emotion, eh? Because I didn't cry for 40 years. Wow. And the moment he was born, I cry 11 days, 10 hours a day, non-stop. My God. Like, like, insane. Like, I didn't... And every time I talk about this, I get emotional. And although I was there and I was afraid about him, Christina would go near and I was staying. Yeah. To make sure that yes. it's yes. okay. Yes, this is this is our, our function is to make it's it's like this is in our genes. We we need to do the construction, the the, the hard job. You know, like uh, the house is falling, door is broken. You know, this is our job to make safety. Like I, I remember when I was married, I actually made all the furniture, the bed, the wardrobes, everything. But but when they were sick or something. Of course, I'm concerned, but I didn't run there and try to give them things like she did, like my my ex-wife did. This is our. Um, I, I think this is this how we are constructed. From, yeah, to, to, yeah, yeah. Two thousand years. But, but but this is all, all 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 over the place now, and I tell you why because there are many people have divorced, and there's many single parents. There are many people doing the role of two, and this family have changed a lot. So the whole structure is is not the same. So, but so the nature of you as a man is is not to go and touch and uh, you will do it, of course, you will do it. But it's not in our it, nature. It feels it feels unnatural. Yeah. I, I yeah. sometimes sometimes and I'm so open about it. It feels unnatural because uh, I try sometimes not to be like my parents or to to give further on at, uh, the, the the same testament, let's say. Yeah. And uh, I try sometimes to dress him, whatever. And Christina, Damian, but you dress him uh, wrong. Yes, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, but I'm not a female. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's my first yeah, yeah. answer. Because, yeah. because I, I'm not paying attention to this. To me, I know that I have to wake up, go to work, making make, making sure that they have everything they need and be there for them. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know all the other details. So when Christina tells me, oh, we have to do this for him and this and this, I'm like, okay, you take care of this. I, I need to care, take care of the other things. Yeah, you see, I... I um, Maybe it sounds simplistic, but that's how I... I understand. You see, I, I, I brought my children on my own, actually, from a young age. But when we divorced and the children with me, especially my son, my biggest shock was how to buy him clothes. I didn't know the sizes. And, and uh, <laughs> I got the wrong things all the time. I, 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 I didn't think about that at all. I did, it was in my mind, you know. So when I go and buy things, I didn't realize. I didn't realize they grow too fast also. That I have to buy something bigger for them to grow. And, it, it, and I had to start to learn all this from the beginning. You see? It, it, of course we can do this. But it's, it's kind it's of not, not, not our nature so much. And when, unfortunately, when divorce happened and the, the father is not involved, it's very difficult for, for the women also, because they have to be a bit like a man to, to, to protect them as well and run to do things the men should be doing. But again, I don't want to make this a problem because maybe the world is changing now to something else. This, this is the way it's going to be. You also said that yesterday, and I wanted to highlight that, that this thing have changed in terms of like uh, equilibrium, like balance. Yes, yes. I mean, woman has the same equal things in the house like the man. And yeah, yes. What do you have to say about this? Because yesterday you you, you really emphasized it very strongly. Um, As you said, it's not now. It's coming from generations, from all the pain that was what, before. What, what, the woman, they were humiliated. Yeah, yeah, look, I make it very simple. Okay. I said it in other podcasts as well, but I think people need to hear it a lot. A woman, a woman, the, the boy comes from a woman, yes? So all of us came from, from women. So if I was a woman and have a child, a boy, the boy grew up, yes? And this boy at some point consider him as a man bigger than a woman, yes? Like more superior. This is what had, how it was. How can a woman feel if I made a man and the man make me inferior? This is the ultimate injustice. You see? So I look in Arabic countries and 
<coughs> in the part of the world when the women completely covered and there's a morality police with a stick if the woman show her bit of her eye she get beaten up in the street but by a man this man could be her son how 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 would they feel how would they feel inferior when they meet the person in the first place and i think this has been gone into our genes and created so much aggression in women for sure for thousands of years of course even the women who don't who don't have it anymore but still as you said it's coming it's coming through the generation you see so now women it has nothing to do with religion because even the great the greatest teacher jesus says said woman did yeah. he say mother yeah and they, you know in in islamic culture uh, a man can marry four yes if 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 a man wants a divorce he can only say it you divorce and finish only with word nothing else a woman no no she if she wants divorce she will ask him to divorce her you see what i mean and while he's married he's entitled to go and marry another one you see how on earth this the people thinking these religions are 3000 years old maybe it was a time when men used to go to war and there was very few men and and many women maybe it's okay to marry more because the men are such a minority and they die quickly in the desert or something yeah. but we're not there yeah but we're not now anymore it's not now anymore so so really i think a lot of problems that uh, happened between men and women over the years that and but the situation now is like this the environment and the technology now does not need the man's power anymore you don't you don't need to be strong you need your mind to be strong in your own mind not your body anymore you see you need to think and the woman can be stronger than you because she earns more than you she's more powerful the woman's you. brain is better and i i, I realized this some time ago when i worked for in a hospital for many years 15 years in family therapy we also have family and children department so we, may, our main work is to see the children have problems yes 99% of the children have problem are boys not girls and in the school the boys are always behind and the girls always in the front and i saw it coming that was yeah i saw the the world is changing they are getting smarter and smarter in fact uh, from the biology itself the boys brain develops slower this has been approved by neuroscience and this has a problem for the for the family because when a stress come to the family the younger get affected more than the older so if the girl is more mature than the boy yes she will not be hit too much by stress in the family as much as the boy that's why the suicide rate is higher in men, men than, women. than women so then i have a, a question for you yeah i know it it, can, it could be a bit uh, controversial or, yeah, or yeah. crazy but that's why i'm here because yeah. my therapist <laughs> uh, there is so much talk and with with all my appreciation and but i I'm a very curious kid and I like to put questions. Yeah, yeah. There is so much talk about of course mother is the woman the, the ones that gives life or, or yeah, mother yeah, is yeah. the womb yeah, the mother, yeah, yeah. mother is the uh, the 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 love the, yeah, the relation. Yeah, yeah. So then the figure in in our uh, religion in the Christian orthodox in in the Islam uh, religion in the Buddhism there is always the men why why don't we have let's say in some cultures in peru and stuff we have also the goddess uh, why don't we have the female and we have the men uh, i tell you why this is going to be amazing <laughs> women made the miracle by creating a child man can never do the man has to create something else <laughs> <laughs> so we have to give him something too yes can you see we can never compete with them so we have to compete by being in the front you see uh, so you can see artists poets great people 
are men, not women. We have to prove to the world we can do something. <laughs> if we have to do something, we don't too. have to do it. Yeah. Very few women poets, great artists, painters, all men. You notice? The therapy invented by men, not by women. But they can't do it, by the way. Only women can do it. But, but why do we do that? Actually, see in a relationship between men and women, yes? The man gets excited, he wants to create something, always. And she's very relaxed, actually. You know, because she has proved herself to the world. She made a miracle that we cannot do. And the problem now is, when women try to compete with the men, they lose their femininity. They have already proved to the world that we are creators and we have achieved a miracle. But we always second because we could not do what they have done. The most amazing so, thing. so we have to, like your music, you have to do it this way. I have to do it my way. Because, and you know, every man wants the woman to admire them and be impressed by them. So much. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, yeah. Can you imagine this? Women actually need to be loved, of course, everything, but she doesn't have to uh, um, prove herself to the world. You know, it, it, for her to have a child, it's, it's the ultimate creation. So we have to have a child in a different way, by your own outside creation. <laughs> I have one, one last question. So you have a child now. I know, you, thank you. you. <laughs> I have possibly one last question, but yeah. I'm sure it's going to be longer. Yeah. Love. Yeah. About love. Yes. Talk to me about love, please. What do you want to talk about? First of all, uh, the every painter, every musician, every uh, poetry, they've been talking about love for the last 2,000, 3,000 years. But within the the family, internal family system now that you're talking about, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. two of them, not from the therapeutic point yes, of view. Yeah. Because of these dynamics that, that uh, is happening between the man and woman, yeah. and this power game, and all this uh, guilt, defensiveness, and all these things, somehow uh, the notion of love has started to, uh, to take different type of form. You understand what I'm trying to say? Uh, uh, you mean they are not don't love each other anymore, or what? What do you mean? Possibly because there is all these weapons against each other. The woman was trying to be the man. The man it, it became too much like a woman. Uh, this is powerful. This has a bigger salary. The man has to be like a woman with a child. The, the woman. So it took all these roles within the new generation. Took different roles. And it affects, of course, the, the, the main thing that we all have and we are made out of love, which is the most important thing. But somehow, because of all these instruments, we forget about love. Uh, uh, love can never be defined. It's impossible. There's no word for it. it it's actually not, it's not a relationship. It's not anything you think about. I, I, I don't even... We'll never be able to actually define it, yes? But... Um, it's very difficult to put into words. What love is a very high level of consciousness, extremely high. I could say even love is God itself. Every cell in our body holding by it, itself by love. Of course, I don't know what I'm talking about because I cannot. I cannot explain it, I can give you research, nothing, but this is what I sense. And I think people, if a person sense and touch this love in themselves, yeah, in their partner, yes, they will never have any problems at all. All these are games and distractions. For example, we talked in a seminar about the, the guy who spoke about uh, He's feeling weak, and his, the women are stronger. Yeah. Yeah. I can turn everything upside down. Uh, a very loving man will not give a damn if the woman's strong or not. It's okay. He can handle it. You see? So, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if women rule the world. 
It doesn't matter. If, if I am a loving person, it will not affect me at all. You see? So we can, we, everything can be... It, 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 there's something that... It, maybe God itself is love, and that's the end of it. But I don't think love is anything that we can touch. It's, it's music, like the music. You see? Uh, when, when you talk about music, yes? What is the first thing that comes to mind? A musician, instrument, uh, something you write. The music is none of that. It's not, I think love is the same. It's none of all. It's not a relationship. It's not being with anybody. It's, it's, it's something that a person with you will allow you to sense it. Will, will give you the vehicle. It's the instrument. And it's been wonderful if you are the person who actually have the same feeling as you are. I think this is wonderful. I don't think you have any problems at all. But, but you know, going back to when we started the conversation, if, if I never experienced the presence of a loving person with me from the beginning, life will be a big mountain to climb. Okay. <laughs> So it ends, it ends up with, oh, oh, again with the relation with the mother. Yes. <laughs> That's where is the answer. But, but, the, but the relationship with the mother can be healed. There is no problem. It can be healed. It can be healed by one simple thing. To say yes to your past. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have a little surprise for you. I was not thinking about it. So I will, uh, as you said about talking about love and the uh, music, I yes. want to make some music now. Okay. Not, good. not something that I know. Okay. I will compose something right now. Especially for, uh, especially for you. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, wow. My God. Yeah.
Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you, thank thank you. you so much, Manis. Thank you. It was great talking to you, really. It was great for me talking to you, and, and it's a great honor. And thank you, thank yes, you, thank you. And I, I'd like to hear some of your things. You have a CD or something? I'll, I'll you left, you left one in the, in the in the course on uh, the table in the back. I, I so. saw a CD. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know what happened to it. Yeah, to I will send you. I will send you more. Don't worry. I will okay. send you today. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was it's great. It's been a great honor, and uh, thank you for my therapy. Yeah. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much.